Hey everybody, so in video 2170 we made this thing, it's a water motor and we attached it to this Seiko winding mechanism because the water motor goes backwards and forwards like that and if we can change that into a rotation, well we can connect it to anything and make it a generator, so we attached it to that. But if we remove that, what we've actually got is just the water motor by itself and there are a number of things to actually notice about it. One of them is that that motion there is regular. It's regular because we pour the water in here at a fixed rate, dribbles in there, fills up and then does that. Then the water dribbles in there, fills up and it does that and it does that at a constant rate of one rock every four seconds. If I set that water to dribble in there at a certain rate, I can change that by changing the speed of the water. But it rocks backwards and forwards gently with power at a fixed and constant rate and of course that immediately made me think of what this would be good for is a clock. I have of course provided all of these STL files in Thingiverse and the link is down in the description. But if we have a look at this then the first thing we need to do is quickly review how we built it. And what I came up with was this. Now there are surprisingly few parts for it but the heart of it is this thing which sits on a little riser there so it's kept out of the way. So we have that arc and then we have this piece of bamboo and that's going to go on pivot points. The water dribbles down there, fills that, makes it do that. Automatically the water then goes there and it will rock backwards and forwards or at least that's the idea. All I need to do obviously is put some bearings on it and a couple of pivot points like that. Now obviously this can swing all the way around which we don't want it to do. We want it to stop there so there's a couple of brackets that go either side in there and there's the other one goes there so that it will only do that so we need to glue those down. Now it can only do that. And now you need a water feed, which is what this bit and this bit is for. That goes on there like that and then the collecting horn goes on there and that will direct the water into the right position. <laughs> so now we can test this and see if it works. <laughs> so to make this a clock what we need is some way of converting that rocking into rotation that we can then put gears on to gear it to the correct time sequence and the start of that is this. It's basically a very big ratchet that's got a small gear in the center and it's got a support bracket. The support bracket goes on there and then our ratchet goes on there with the gear facing out. Then we need a linkage arm between this and this so that when that goes there we get a push on this that will force it round and then as it goes that way it forces it the other way. So that way nothing, that way forcing it one click. That one click will take four seconds. So let's glue that on. So in order to do that we need these four pieces. Now these small bits are clips and you need to do two of those to end up with five bits because what we want to do is we want to use this to push it round a little bit but we also need it to not come back on itself. So these bits, this and this, constitute a push rod. That goes on there like that, the clip goes on top like that and it goes on here because you'll notice on this bit of bamboo on one side only it sticks out by a centimeter and that's going to be the output and that push rod goes on the output. The rod itself is going to be a bit of brass. I'm using three millimeter brass steel just as well. It'll take a fair bit of push so three millimeters of printing is not going to hack it. You need a little bit of something stronger so a nail or something like that but I'm going to use a bit of brass. That will then push this ratchet round as that rocks backwards and forwards but of course it's got a push rod, it's going to push and then drag back up and we don't want it to go that way so what we've got is a little ratchet to stop it. That ratchet fits on there so that it can only go one way and it gets stopped. So we need to glue all of those on with a bit of super glue. 
So we've glued it on there and it's at a slight angle, about 22 degrees to the main bamboo. And of course, as that rocks backwards and forwards, that acts like a push rod. However, what we've done is add weight here. So we put it out of balance. What we need to do is put a counterbalance weight on it. And that weight is something like a, uh, well, this is a dome nut that I'm just going to glue on there. We'll put that on, give it a go. Okay, I've got some tap water in a bottle. Let's give it a quick try. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. Let's put some gears on. Okay, to put on the gears, we need this mid gear carrier, and it goes over there like that and glues to this section here at the bottom. And a bit of super glue will glue that on. Then what we need is, there it is, the 60 tooth gear. This 60 tooth gear has another gear in the center there. And that 60 tooth gear slots on there and engages with that gear there. So that we get that. Then what we need is this 50 tooth gear with this long bit here and that just rests on there for now because we're going to put this front carrier on. If you look at the front carrier, behind it's got an indentation there and then a through hole there. That goes on like that so that the indentation engages with that gear there and again we just fix that with a bit of super glue. Then we take this 16 tooth gear and it fastens on there so that we get that. Okay, so what's happening here is the water comes in here, fills that, gives that a push. For every half turn of that large ratchet wheel, these gears translate that into a motion that is one sixtieth of a turn of this centre spindle through this back gear here. And of course that's exactly what we want, because I've got a clock face here. If I hold my clock face there, then I want that in 60 seconds to move one minute. And one minute is one sixtieth of a circle, so I want a minute to go from here to here. So that centre one will do exactly that. Now we do have this gear on that um, shaft as well, because of course, once that's gone round one whole turn, we want this, our hand, to move from there to there, or if you like, one twelfth. So we need to take more gear ring from this one this time to move it one twelfth. And to do that, we'll use these two gears here. This one goes on there like that. And then this one goes on there like that. And that translates the motion to one twelfth. So the center takes a minute and this one takes the hour hand. Okay, I put some little feet on there and they're in the files. Now, the clock face goes on the front here. And to help that, there's this bar which glues on there, which is a support for the clock face. And then this bit fits over there and both holds in the gear and is the other support for the clock face. The hour hand is a push fit onto that outer ring right there. And finally, of course, with a spot of glue, the minute hand goes right on there, fitting in that little hole. So when the whole thing's together, the rocking of this pendulum will drive this, it drives all the cogs, driving the minute in the hour hand. Of course, <laughs> be edges before you see that, so I'm going to hold that out of the way, and then we can just spin that, and you can see that the minute hand is turning. And when that goes all the way around, the hour hand will become round, and of course it started moving already. To reset it, of course, you just hold those out of the way and twiddle that round to the right time. And then you can reset the clock or you can advance the clock to set the time. Okay, so it is a fun thing to do. And as you pour the water in here, of course, that will set the time at which this goes. So a, a pipe with a tap on it, so it, you can change the flow rate, will change the timekeeping of this. Now, I did do this so it was really easy to do. There were no bearings in this, and the only extra bit you need is that little bit of bar or a nail to push it around to make sure it doesn't break. So it's not going to be the most accurate clock, clock in the world. Of course, you can remake it and put bearings in everything, which will make it very much smoother and very much more accurate. And I may actually do that. Now, I did this so that it was just fixed at one point here. So it's a little bit wobbly here. I might also extend that to there to put a bracket on it to stop it being so wobbly. But that is a water-based clock that <laughs> actually works. Now, of course, it needs a water supply, uh, and I can think of loads of ways that you would organise that. You might have a pump in a dish, for instance, so you're recirculating the water, and it would just continue if you had it in a dish. Put it under uh, its own supply, like a tank with a drip feed in it, maybe a hose with a... Um, 
tap on it so you can alter the flow rate. Lots of ways of actually doing that. But I have a bottle of tap water and we're going to try it with the tap water. So there you go, it certainly works and it's quite a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.